What is up nerds? This is Crash here with my first mapping tutorial video. Um, this tutorial should be beneficial to not only mappers but the players who wish to learn more about the environments they're playing on and for anybody just kind of curious about how TF2 works in general. It's always beneficial to know more about what you're playing and as a mapper this is also going to be on a topic that you should know how to do. Uh, it causes a lot of issues for mappers and you get a lot of whiny players if you don't do it right. Um, this tutorial is on clipping. This video will cover the various uses of clipping with examples in both Valve official maps and a few of my own custom maps because, you know, i got to plug those. Um, this tutorial is also going to be assuming that you have at least a basic knowledge of how to navigate Hammer, how to manipulate brushes in it, and how to create a properly sealed map. I'm not going into any of that. There's plenty of other videos out, out there on those topics. Um, this is just sort of an intermediate to advanced video. By the end of this short series of uh, videos, you should be able to identify the invisible brushes surrounding you while you play and learn how to identify and locate problems in your maps or other maps. <coughs> Exploits. Uh, this tutorial isn't necessarily the only way to do things or even the best. Uh, this is just how I personally do the clipping on all of my maps uh, and what I've learned over the years based off my own personal experiences playing and listening to other players. So, you know, there's going to be other ways to do this. This is just how I do it. So first, we'll start off with a basic definition. Uh, clipping can generally be considered an invisible tool texture brush that limits movement of the player. Uh, these brushes are solid to players, but do not stop projectiles. I can't cross over, but I can shoot through it. Except for fence. These brushes are used to keep the player out of areas they aren't supposed to be in, uh, keep them from getting caught up on brushwork or uh, models sticking out, and also, they are used to flatten out stairs into ramps to prevent the player's screen from jittering while they're climbing up and down them. Um, this also stops any issues from a player uh, jumping on the stairs. Clip brushes can also be used to create hitboxes for models or brushwork that allows players to shoot through. Uh, but we'll show exa more examples of that later. I prefer to think of clipping as three different types. There's blocking, smoothing, and hitboxing. Uh, blocking is the most common use for clipping, which you can see here, uh, the big giant purple brushes that aren't normally here. Um, and this, this type is used to keep players inside the confines of your map and off rooftops and other non-gameplay areas. It's this, this keeps players where you want them. Uh, an important note about this type of clipping is that it should, it should always be hinted at, at the very least. Uh, meaning a player shouldn't wonder why they are being stopped by some invisible force, uh, whether it's a fence or some other barrier. It doesn't have to go as high as the clipping itself, but it should at least suggest why the clip brushes are there. An example of that is this fence right here on Badlands. Uh, it's really obvious that this is an out of bounds area and no one generally tries to get over it. You know that it's not gonna be a place you can get to. Um, but you know, it's, it's certainly possible as a soldier to rocket jump over that. You can also see it here on Badlands on the uh, rooftops. Um, it's, it's used to block players from being able to get up on any of these high ledges and uh, stop them from just flying over them as well with uh, like sticky jumpers and things like that. The railing here on Hydro, which some of you may be asking what is a Hydro, um, is a really interesting case because it's actually far lower than any other uh, clip brush suggestion prop. Um, is, but a, with a clever use of detailing, uh, it keeps the average player from even wanting to go over there. There's nothing... You know, it doesn't look like a place you'd want to go. The you know, fight continues this way. Um, but despite being so low, it's, it's still a good suggestion for where you can and cannot go. Smoothing clipping is a bit more hidden type of clipping. Uh, it's most commonly used on stairs, um, but also on small brushes that stick out or props that a player can get caught on. If you've ever tried to retreat from an enemy only to get caught up on the edge of a door or a window or even try to jump up a small edge only to have your movement suddenly halted, that's bad smoothing clipping. This is the type of clipping that a player only really notices if it's not done right. Uh, this type is also used to stop players from exploiting perch points high up on the edges of a map. Um, this can cause by either detail brushwork or even just a model sticking out. This type of clipping is where a mapper can really go crazy. Um, for example, uh, this map is Stony Ridge, which was a map I worked on with a, with a team of people, and one of my jobs was the uh, primary clipper of the map. Um, I took care of all the clipping on this. You can see I took it pretty damn seriously. Um, every edge, every little beam, um, every cluster of models that I thought a player could get stuck on, I've smoothed out to the best of my abilities. Um, 
hopefully trying to eliminate player frustration. Um, this isn't always necessary. You can see I went really detailed. Um, but it doesn't hurt to do. Um, there's never going to be too much clipping, in my opinion, in a map. Um, the more time you spend on it, the better your map should be, unless you're doing things wrong. Um, you want to create a good experience for the player, and you want to make things nice and smooth and round, and you don't want them to get frustrated at your map. Players should be trying to fight each other, not the map, unless it's Trainsaw Laser, um, which, you know, then they, of course, they should be fighting the map. The third type of clipping is what I like to call hitboxing, uh, which sort of has a dual meaning for me. Um, it's really important when you're making your map to keep an eye on model hitboxes, uh, which are represented here by the blue lines. Um, as you can see, this is an exploit on a current release of my map, CP Glassworks, um, where a player can stand up on this edge. It's fixed in the next version, but it's here right now, I'm showing you. These types of things can cause players to get stuck up on them and can generally be fixed with um, just clipping brushes by like putting, you know, rounding out the edges ar around it. Um, but one of your options you have is to um, remove the hitbox itself from the model. You'll see right here on this railing, it doesn't actually have one. Um, now the benefit to that is that it allows you to shoot through it um, and the railing is not going to catch anything up. Um, and I create my own clip brush around it so it still acts as a railing but can still be shot through without impeding any uh, projectiles. Uh, you can also do this with higher up models such as this sign. Uh, and this helps kind of eliminate uh, perch points on your map that a player can use to exploit. Um, you don't always have to do it. Like there's no way a player can really get up here. So it's not necessary to do it there. Um, you can also get away with doing this with uh, brush-based detailing by turning them into either a funk illusionary or a funk brush with the solidity churned off. Um, but I'll get more into that later on when I actually dive into Hammer with you. Um, but one thing to keep in mind when you start doing more stuff like that is how close you are to gameplay areas. Um, like this might actually be pushing it a little bit as you can put a sticky bomb within an edge. Like say I, I turned off the hitbox on this door frame you could hide stickies in this door frame and somebody walking by would have no chance of seeing them um so one now that i'm do i'm looking at it that is a really good place to hide stickies um stuff like the railing here isn't always necessary but it's some it's a way i like to manipulate my map to better suit players um it's something i prefer to do and i'm starting to see it pop up more in other maps as well I actually jumped on Badwater here to show you an example of railings that aren't clipped that way and why they're frustrating to me, but apparently in a more recent update, they fixed it. They no longer have their hitboxes inside and they are clipped uh, with a clip brush. Um, so I would take that as a valve seal of approval that it's a thing that should be done now. Uh, so that concludes this part of the tutorial. Um, in the next video, I'll jump into Hammer and I'll show you more about how to manipulate clip brushing uh, to work with your map and how to spot issues before they cause problems. Uh, if you have any questions about clipping, suggestions for the next video on it, or even want to point out something I missed, feel free to comment below. Uh, if this tutorial helped you, please hit the like button on the video and subscribe to catch the next parts of it and all my other videos, because they're cool too. So you should watch them. So I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.